Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Southeast Media Sunrise, dedicated to giving a voice to authors of all genres. I'm your host, Jody Hawkinson. Joining us remotely by phone today is Stephen Murray, author of Discreetly Yours. Stephen Murray is a Las Vegas author of fiction with roots in England and Southern Africa. He writes in multiple genres. His first published works were Mainstream, The Chapel of Eternal Love, Wedding Stories from Las Vegas, and its sequel, Return to the Chapel of Eternal Love, Marriage Stories from Las Vegas. These were followed by the cozy murder mystery, Murder Aboard the Queen Elizabeth II. His latest novel is a crime fiction set in Las Vegas titled Discreetly Yours. In addition to being a published author, Stephen Murray is a partner in a software development and support company, which he originally founded in California in 1982. Welcome, Stephen, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jody, and thank you for having me as a guest on your program, and I thank your listeners for tuning in. So tell me, what was the catalyst that motivated you to start writing fiction? Well, um, actually, it was, it's a strange journey, Jody. I, I originally wrote a biography of my travels around the world because I've been to 40 odd different countries. And I thought it would be nice to write about those experiences. And I spent two years writing this book, and that's when I discovered the joy of writing. But when I took it to be published, I was given to understand that you know people aren't buying that kind of stuff. That if you need to, if you want to sell books, you need to um, write women's fiction. <laughs> so that's how I came to start writing. That's how I wrote the Chapel book, um, and I did it because I enjoyed writing so much, and I wanted to see if I could actually write fiction for women. Actually, see if I could do it. So that's how it started. That's how the journey started for fiction. How many years have you actually been writing? Well, I think when I started writing my biography, I think it was uh, probably about 2009, 2010, round about there. So probably about nine years or so, nine to ten years. Are all of your books self-published? Uh, all four of them, yes. Self-published, all four of them. And what made you decide to self-publish your books? Well, because when I'd actually finished, I, again, I was totally green. I, I had never met any authors, Jody. <laughs> I didn't even know where to go. I didn't know how to copyright it. I didn't know about the, those little um, ISBN numbers for the back. I was really, truly ignorant. And I planned on publishing the chapel book. Um, but when I wrote the murder mystery book, um, a lady I knew, she'd heard of this company that helps people publish and um, helps editing and cover design and copyright. And I thought, great, what, um, what a super opportunity. And I went and met the owner of the company, uh, Brian Ruff from Imagine Communications in Las Vegas. And as she said, if you take it to a traditional publisher, you know, it could be years before it sees the light of day. That's even if it ever gets published. And I just kind of like the control of self-publishing. You know, you own everything and you have a say in the cover design and the final edits and all of that. And I just prefer the, the control and that's why I self-published. How difficult have you found for it to have been to market your books um, as one who self-publishes? Well, it, it was very tough. Um, in, certainly in the early stages, um, you know, once I got the book printed and I had it in my hot little hands, it was like, <laughs> now, now what do I do? Now where do I go? <laughs> and <laughs> I made the mistake of assuming that just by sending out a flyer of my book to all my friends and family just through you know, the five degrees of separation that would be on the top of the New York Times bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it, it doesn't quite work like that. But, um, you know, I, I think um, as I've gone by and you get a little bit better known, and I, I found thinking outside of the box helped a lot, Jody. Um, certainly with the chapel books, you know, you don't just have to have book signings and book stores like Barnes & Noble. Of course, they're great. But now I have um, book signings in Hallmark bookstores in Las Vegas. And um, I've had some in a beauty salon just before Valentine's Day, you know, when women are all having their hair done and their manicures and pedicures and things like that. And um, a couple of the 
the business I launched here have allowed me to go and hold book signings there. So just thinking outside of the box and as tough as it is as it is the market, it's been an enjoyable journey, Jody. It's it's like life in general, it's what you make of it. And um I, I go and speak to a lot of senior centers, you know, senior citizens. They're a delightful audience. They're, they're receptive. They appreciate somebody coming in from the outside world to talk to them. So there's lots of opportunities out there. It's just finding the time, making the time, and pursuing it. That is so creative. So, Stephen, tell us about your book, Discreetly Yours. What inspired you to write a crime fiction about an escort agency in Las Vegas? <laughs> an exclusive escort agency in Las Vegas. <laughs> well, I, I have to tell you, that they say write about what you know, and I want to make it quite clear. I don't write about what I know. Uh, <laughs> I know nothing about escort agencies. But in my first book, um, the inspiration for Discreetly Yours came from a chapter in my first book, which was um, Wedding Stories from Las Vegas, uh, the chapter of Eternal Love. And that's a series of stories as to why couples come and get married in Las Vegas and why we're the marriage capital of the world. And one of the chapters was about an escort who who happened to fall for one of her clients. And, of course, he didn't want to get divorced. He wanted to be with his kids and grow, stayed in the marriage for the kids and so on and so forth. And she waited years for him um, to get a divorce. And... I wanted to paint her in a somewhat sympathetic light because I'm sure escorts aren't popular with women, obviously, because they sleep with their husbands. So um, I had it that when she arrived at the chapel that he didn't show up and she was left high and dry at the altar. So I tried to put her in a sympathetic light. And much to my surprise, I got all these letters saying, what happened to Emmy, who was the escort? What happened to her? You know, did she ever find happiness? And I was surprised at the court that it's Struck. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to take that one level further. And Emmy isn't in this really yours, but I thought, let me write a book about three S agency and how they work for this total um, uh, bump, that word. I've got to be careful what I say on the air. Um, but they come up with what they think is the perfect crime to get rid of him. And it's crime fiction, and it does have a mystery aspect, but because even though you know they're going to kill the, the guy, um, the key is, are they going to get away with it, or do they trip up? And then more to the point, does the reader want them to get away with it, even though they've murdered somebody? You know, they sympathetic to the plight of the three, three women. So that's what prompted and originated the storyline, and that's how it came about. So tell us, are the characters in your books based on people you know? No, they're all, all in all my books, all the characters are, are figments of my imagination. It's all 100% imagination. And I must confess, I've had the benefit, I, I am in a writer's critique group, and I've had the benefit of the help of, um, uh, there's, there was originally four ladies and myself, now unfortunately one passed, so there's three and myself, and they have been just an absolute boon, especially giving things from women's perspective, um, helping me out on some of the words like, you don't use the word handbag anymore, it's purses and things of that nature, so they uh -huh. <laughs> absolutely boon and, and helping me make it more credible. How difficult has it been for you to come up with identifiable personality characteristics, especially from as a member of the opposite sex? Very tough, Jody. It's very, very hard, but I think that's part of the joy. You know, you don't want it to just be an easy thing because then there's no challenge. Mm -hmm. So coming up with the characteristics and the dialogue um, was a great challenge. And... Um, Probably not quite so much in this one because in the chapel book that was written specifically for women and it's all about married couples and mainly from women's perspective. And it was a real challenge because you've got to try and dig down inside yourself and see if you have those own emotions or if they're emotions you're conveying, whether you can actually relate to them. And 
in the first book, it was very, very hard. And um, there's no question about it, Jody. Women and men do think differently. There's no <laughs> question about that. And as I said, the women in my critique group were a great help, and they'd hit me with a, over the head with a two-by-four sometimes, and um, and still do, and did in the discreetly yours, and I'd have to go back and rewrite. But that's what's made it so challenging and so enjoyable. It's got to be a challenge. How did you come up with the title, Discreetly Yours? I didn't have the title when I set out, but when the three women, Saturn, Ruby, and Goldie, decide to get rid of Frankie, you know, who's who's the head of the agency, they decide that what they're going to do is they're going to reach out to all the clients and take over the agency, and they decide to come up with um, their own name for the agency, and one of the names that came to mind for the agency was discreetly yours. And as I was reading out the chapter in my critique group, one of the people said, there's the title for your book right there, discreetly <laughs> yours. And I thought, wonderful, they're absolutely right. It is a wonderful title. So that's how the title came up, because it's really the name of the agency. <laughs> so out of curiosity, tell us who your favorite author is. Um, I tend to not to read too much fiction, but I have to say... Um, when I was growing up, I loved Charles Dickens. Uh -huh. I really did. And I think it's because his characters are so creative and imaginative. And he did such a well, uh, such a good job of defining his characters. I mean, you, you think of people like Ebenezer Scrooge. I mean, just Scrooge. It just sounds like the name of a mean character. And the Artful Dodger and Fagin and people like that, um, they, they were just also, the, the names and the way he describes his characters and their personalities, they were just so vivid. Uh, I loved his style of writing. So tell us what your next project is. Well, I've written a cozy mystery and a crime fiction, and um, obviously the two romance slash mainstream fiction books. Um, and I've now decided that I'm starting to work on a Christmas novella. It's not going to be a full-length book, but it will be, it's going to be a sort of shortish book. It'll, and it will be centered around Christmas. Obviously, it's not going to be ready for this Christmas um, uh, because I want to... I want to get it right. I've got a special story in mind, and I want to make sure that I get it right. So um, hopefully it will be out and completed by next So will there by any chance be any type of a Charles Dickens-type flair to it? No. No, <laughs> that, no. It, it's, it's not going to be along the lines of a Christmas cow. It's going to be more like a, a, a Hallmark Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> I will look forward to reading it. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we're out of time. Oh, my goodness. I know. It went fast. Anyone interested in purchasing this book, Discreetly Yours, can log into semediapro.com or visit Amazon. It is available in paperback. And you can find out more as well as purchase all of Stephen Murray's books at authorstephenmurray.com. Or you can go to each book's individual website, such as discreetlyyours.net. And that was Stephen Murray, author of Discreetly Yours. Thanks again for joining us today, Stephen. Oh, it's been my pleasure. And once again, thank you for having me as a guest. And I hope your listeners enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed being a guest. I am sure they have enjoyed it greatly. And listeners, if you're interested in getting your book published, please visit us at semediapro.com and click on the book publishing link. This is Jody Hawkinson, host of Southeast Media Sunrise, Southeast Media Productions. Like us on Facebook at Southeast Media Productions or visit our website at semediapro.com. <laughs>